Hello, everybody. I'm glad that I am here, and thanks to Diane and everyone for attending this talk. This talk is going to be fun, and I guess the word for fun is devariatendo or something like that. But basically, it's about the key takeaway from this talk is what Diane was saying and Miguel. If you paid close attention to what Miguel and Diane was saying all along, this is what this talk is about. It's basically, I am an active in different communities. What benefits did I get? And what benefits you will get to yourself and you will give to your peers? So the key takeaway is about, it's about culture. And if you listen to my colleague, Dr. Yasmin, uh, earlier, one of the problems that we had for adopting Kubernetes, for adopting OpenShift, was awareness, was learning. And one way to solve this problem is actually communities, learning communities. OK. So let's start from the basic. Who can tell me here what is a community? OK, nobody wants to say, so let's make it collective. Can you please help me in Spanish? Ayuda me. Can everybody please stand up? Because it, you have been sitting for a long time, I mean. Shake your hands so that the blood flows. Shake your hands, OK? We want you to wake up. OK, now everybody, no, no, st Christians, please stand up. <laughs> OK, now everybody, look around you and see somebody you don't know. OK, find somebody you don't know and tell him your name and why you are here in OpenShift Commons. You don't have to shake hands. We have uh, something going on. But... OK, now that's the sense of the community. That's what this community is about, knowing each other. We are all in OpenShift Commons community, and we have to learn about each other. OK, and we have to learn about purposes. OK, check your hands again. Do you feel uh, energized? The community gives you energy. So everybody learned about everybody else except me. You haven't learned about me. OK, so who am I? I am Walid Shari. As uh, Diane said, I call myself the cloud native janitor. The, at one time in LinkedIn, I was getting spams by recruiters. So the best thing to do to recruiters is give them a title they will not basically relate to. I am a Red Hat accelerator. And that's what we are going to talk about later on. That's what we're going to focus on. The community of Red Hat Accelerator. It's a very focused community supported by the vendor. The local community leader for AWS, Cloud Native, and this is one community I bridge to. Remember what Miguel and Diana was saying about bridging to other communities, to other projects? So this is the community I bridge to, as well as Docker Meetup. This is another community I bridge to, as well as a CNCF chapter, MENA, Middle East, North, uh, North Africa. And we are going to include Turkey also. OK. So basically, I am active in several communities. And this is really, is it wasting my time or is it giving me benefits? Also, I am an OpenShift platform engineer. So this community helped me build my knowledge, helped me uh, make my job easier, help me understand what's going on in the world with OpenShift. I'm advocating for open source. I'm advocating for automation, infrastructure as code, Ansible, containers, uh, basically Kubernetes and OpenShift. I am also have been selected by AWS, nominated by AWS to be AWS Container Hero. There are 48 heroes, container heroes worldwide. And there are around 270 uh, uh, AWS heroes worldwide, 270 plus. I am a curate. One thing that I am famous with, there's two GitHub repos, one for the certification of CKA. The other one is the certification of the CKS. So I am certified CKA, I am certified CKAD, certified CKS, and anything related to OpenShift to platform. And I call myself the cloud native janitor. So who inspired me? Who was the behind my inspiration? So you see here different groups, different communities. I started with the Egyptian Red Hat pre-sales he got me into LXC before Docker started. And when Docker started with Solomon Hikes two minutes uh, demo, basically I picked up Docker and we started the Docker meetup. And then Jesse Farzella, Nana, Liz Rice, and all the wonderful ladies and all the wonderful gentlemen from the CNCF and from the community. And we, there's one thing here. These are different groups. 
We have Carlos Santana, who's leading the uh, K-Native across the hall, and he's leading a book club. He and Eric Small from Sneak, and Sevi from Container Solutions. So this community across companies, across different uh, activities. Okay? And we have uh, Board Abdullah from uh, Google, and we have many, many, many communities that we cross. So what's the benefit of these inspirations? First, that we, I have built my own two communities, for example, but that doesn't mean that if you want to build a community that you will be successful. I have failed in building a community in Libya, my native country. There was no participation, there was no feedback. So you have two ways to build a community, systematic or non-systematic. The systematic way, if you follow a certain process with certain goals, like at car, change model, it's not supposed to build a community, but if you really follow it, I can guarantee you that you will have success. Either this community being in your company, being in your local community, I think you will have success. What is it based on? First of all, awareness. You have to be aware what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And find people and spread this awareness through them. The moment you find people, find the ones that have a stronger desire and focus on these ones, spearhead these ones, okay? And be inclusive, be diverse. You don't basically, you don't don't be open-minded. The moment you have these small advocates, not just you, don't be a leader, make others leaders. The moment you have this bunch, make sure that you empower them with knowledge. And the moment everybody is empowered with knowledge, enable them. So the first stage is awareness, the second stage is enabling them. How you enable them? Workshops, ability, give them resources. And that's why a community supported by a vendor is a good community, because then you will have more resources than if you have alone, or a community supported by other communities. The last thing is the reinforcement. When you reach something, that's not the end goal. We have to reiterate. We have to find something else to do. So what is the something else to do? It's basically a new technology, a new concept, and things like that. Now, when I talk about communities, usually they are materialized by meetups. But it's not just the meetup. It could be a blog, it could be a video, it could be a mix. But why do you want to attend? Why do you want to write such things? There are, these are different reasons why you want to do this. If I ask, if you, when you ask, what was the things that you shared among yourself? Most likely you hear learning, most likely you hear collaboration, positive vibes, things like that. Being strong together, be, learning together, teaching each other, collaborating with each other, things like that. <clears throat> So let's focus on the Red Hat uh, Accelerators, which is a very special niche community. It's basically, it's global, so it's not localized to a certain specific geo region. It crosses North America, Europe and Middle East, and recently Asia Pacific. There is a boarding system, it's not for everybody, and maximum three people per company. And they focus on people with technical expertise or people with passion. Do you need to be passionate to be part of this community? I am not really, but no, there I am. Okay, so what makes a Red Hat a Red, uh, Red, a Red Hat a great accelerator? First of all, passion, uh, openness, open-minded, and opinionate, opinionated uh, mindset. Red Hat doesn't want you to be just a follower. They want you basically to give feedback Positive feedback, of course, but they want basically to, you, you are representing the customers. You are representing the customers globally. So you have to have your own opinion on how things should run. So this is one thing. Okay? Now, the onboarding system, I will share with you a link at the end using QR code. And the moment you onboard someone, uh, there is like a small interview to make sure about your gigginess, how passionate about technology, how passionate about open source, how passionate about Linux. It doesn't have to be Red Hat. The document says Red Hat, but they don't, uh, the interviewers, what they care about is open source, Linux, and your passion for science fiction, things like this. Basically, your passion to be a continuous learner. So what is the benefits for you? If anybody here is for swag, this is the first benefit. You get cool hats. You get t-shirts, you get stuff, 
you get many swag, the best swag that you can have. But other than swag, you will get training. There is like a weekly program, bi-weekly program, monthly program. You get access to product managers. You get access to engineering. You get access to other uh, customers. And these customers, and these customers are, <laughs> and these customers are selected based on their technical expertise. So you are not accessing anybody. And these customers have realistic use cases. What is the benefit to Red Hat? They will get feedback. They will get customer obsession. So basically, Red Hat becomes customer obsessed, and now they understand what customer needs, what customer feedback is. Okay, you can prioritize what Red Hat has to work on in the roadmap, on the features. On the, uh, you get access to new evaluations. So you can actually drive the roadmap for Red Hat. And you get discounted, uh, discounted uh, subscriptions to event. Sometimes you get access to event, and you get access to token the events. That's why I am here with you, because it's part of my Red Hat Accelerator to promote and to be part of events. So there are lots of activities, and I'm getting dry. Can you hold me a second? Yeah. So let me ask you a question. How do you think you're going to scale your community? So the moment the community goes to a certain uh, scale of number of members and the number of content, what do you think can scale it up? Any, any answers? It's very easy. So basically, like Miguel said, but Miguel is doing it the data science way, OK, you don't have to do it mathematically or something like this. No, it's very simple. It's common sense. Your community is global. Your community is distributed. So this is the first thing you need to do. Don't be a leader. Empower others, empower others in your community to be leaders. Uh, everybody has seen this video before, correct? Uh, OK, I don't know how to play it. Oops. How can I play it? Ah. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, uh, you have seen this video before, but this one is a little bit different. It is with the commentary on the leadership principle that the leader is not the one that makes the product successful. It's the followers. And it's the first followers. It's the second follower. And there is an example from Redis on the link. And you can find the link there. And how Redis became now on GitHub over 55,000 today. It started with one comment on Hacker News. And this Hacker News comment was shared by one, was commented by another, suggesting a different data engine. And one contributed to it, and one made it basically global. So basically, you just need one follower that is total follower for your community to grow. And when your community grows, you will be like this. You'll be like these two kids content. Yeah? Uh, so I have the links for myself and for Red Hat Accelerator program on this uh, QR code. You can ask me any question about Red Hat Accelerator, or you can ask Red Hat Accelerators directly. Uh, and you can ask me about anything, really. And thank you. Muchas gracias.